SpaceX has surprised the world yet again with another genius operation. Today, SpaceX launched its 21st rocket of the year, carrying a robotic Dragon cargo spacecraft to the International Space Station. The Dragon is loaded with almost 4,800 pounds, or 2,200 kilograms, of supplies, research equipment, and hardware, including a new robotic arm that will be tested inside the Bishop airlock of the space station. That is the 90th successful landing of an orbital class rocket and the very first of our newest drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. Andy Tran of SpaceX said during a webcast of this morning's launch, News like this in the world of space-related news has become commonplace. New victories and achievements for SpaceX and Elon Musk, and on the other hand, not so great achievements for Blue Origin, the space company started by Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos. Before starting this video, please consider the possibility of supporting us by subscribing to our channel and liking this video. If you like what we are doing, please share this video with some of your friends. Let's start the video. Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos has been interested in space from an early age. A profile published in 2013 described a 1982 Miami Herald interview Bezos gave after he was named valedictorian of his high school class. The 18-year-old Bezos said he wanted to build space hotels, amusement parks, and colonies for 2 million or 3 million people who would be in orbit. The whole idea is to preserve the Earth, he told the newspaper. The goal was to be able to evacuate humans. The planet would become a park. Now, let's see how Bezos started with Blue Origin. Blue Origin was founded in 2000 in Kent, Washington and began developing both rocket propulsion systems and launch vehicles. The firm has been extremely secretive about its goals from its inception, and it was only until 2015 that it broke its self-imposed quiet. Despite the fact that Blue Origin was created two years before SpaceX and 17 years before Richard Branson's Virgin Orbit, Blue Origin appears to be lagging behind SpaceX, a company that continues to surprise us at every step in typical Musk manner. Richard Branson's Virgin Orbit has also made amazing progress, launching a 50-mile voyage to space a week before Jeff Bezos' flight on July 20th, 2021. To say Jeff Bezos has been a high achiever for decades is an understatement. He controls Amazon, the world's largest online retailer, and he paid $250 million for the Washington Post in 2013. Jeff Bezos got off to a great start with Blue Origin, and the business has a long list of accomplishments. The firm achieved the first vertical landing of a rocket that has gone to space with the launch of New Shepard. Even better, the boosters could be used again and again. Unfortunately, Blue Origin has made little significant progress until the July space launch mission. His flight to suborbital space in zero gravity was meant to be a statement that his rockets were safe for passenger flights. But even on that front, he will have to compete with Richard Branson's Virgin Orbit. Now compare that with the progress of SpaceX, a company no one can argue is ahead of the pack. SpaceX's achievement include the first privately funded liquid propellant rocket to reach orbit, Falcon 1 in 2008, the first private company to successfully launch, orbit, and recover a spacecraft, Dragon in 2010, the first private company to send a spacecraft to the International Space Station, Dragon in 2012, the first vertical takeoff and vertical propulsive landing for an orbital rocket, Falcon 9 in 2015, the first reuse of an orbital rocket, Falcon 9 in 2017, and the first private company to send astronauts to orbit and to the International Space Station, SpaceX Crew Dragon Demo 2 in 2020. SpaceX has flown and reflown the Falcon 9 series rockets over 100 times. SpaceX is also developing Starship, a privately funded, fully reusable super heavy lift launch system for interplanetary spaceflight. Starship is intended to become the primary SpaceX orbital vehicle once operational, supplanting the existing Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Dragon Fleet. Starship will be fully reusable and will have the highest payload capacity for any orbital rocket ever on its debut, scheduled for the early 2020s. Rocket Lab, a lesser-known company owned by Peter Beck, is also beginning to eclipse Blue Origin. It is six years younger than Blue Origin, but its rocket named Electron is showing much promise. This company seems to be on a mission to rival Elon Musk big time. It now boasts over 18 missions, missions that launch satellites into space. 
this August, Rocket Lab has announced it will do three satellite launches for Black Sky, an Earth observation company. This is the biggest step for a space company to date. Black Sky intends to obtain real-time data by collecting numerous photos within 24 hours, rather than one image at a time for this mission. It doesn't stop there. In 2021, Rocket Lab plans to send a probe to the moon, and in a few years, it hopes to have its own probe on Venus. For the time being, Blue Origin is concentrating on securing its position in suborbital tourism. One of the seats on their first crewed journey to space was auctioned off by Bezos, indicating that his excursions will be reserved for the wealthy. He may have given the money to charity, but his actions have been criticized by many. From now on, we'll see even more thrill seekers with rich money exploring zero gravity and reveling in the joy of weightlessness for only a few minutes as he plans more million dollar trips this year. While this is going on, other firms are setting their sights on the moon and beyond. Let's talk now about Blue Origin's delays, and trust me, there's a lot of them. Jeff Bezos and three others were expected to travel for 11 minutes as early as 2017. However, it did not materialize until 2021, and following the pandemic in 2020, the company's intentions appear to have taken a step back. However, this is only one of several delays. New Glenn is yet another great example of a big undertaking that appears to regress year after year. In the fall of 2017, shortly after he became Chief Executive Officer of Blue Origin, Bob Smith received an extensive briefing on the state of the New Glenn rocket program. The projected launch date for the massive reusable rocket was 2020, he was told. As Smith assessed the progress on New Glenn to date and drew upon his long experience at Honeywell Aerospace, he soon came to the conclusion that this launch date was unreasonable. This is not a 2020 launch program, he said at this meeting. This is a 22 program at best. Bezos, who wasn't at the meeting, later announced that any delays won't be accepted and the set timeline will remain unchanged. Of course, Smith was correct. New Glenn did not debut in 2020 and will not do so in 2021. New Glenn has clearly taken a backseat for the time being. The vehicle's release date has been pushed back to the fourth quarter of 2022, which, let's be honest, means at least 2023. The inability to launch isn't the worst part though, since as we all know, rocket engineering is rocket engineering. Worst of all is that Blue Origin attempted to blame the incident on the US Department of Defense, one of its potential clients. New Glenn would have been a game-changing project if it had all gone according to plan. It will be able to deliver incredible payloads to Earth's orbit, geostationary space, and even the moon. However, if former employees are right, we won't be seeing the New Glenn soon. For starters, it has been stated that New Glenn is replicating several parts of SpaceX's super heavy engineering. Despite the fact that these reports appear to be untrue, analysts claim that New Glenn is facing delays as a result of Bezos's haste. Also, New Glenn wasn't supposed to be such a massive rocket in the first place. It was supposed to be only a step above New Shepard. Bezos, on the other hand, chose to go all out with the 313 foot tall rocket. According to a former employee, it's as if NASA went directly from Alan Shepard to the Saturn V rocket. The rocket is costly to produce, forcing the firm to strive to turn a profit as soon as possible. First, the rocket should be reusable. But the bigger challenge is that New Glenn needs nearly 4 million pounds of thrust compared to New Shepard's 110,000. SpaceX vs Blue Origin the Government Accountability Office rejected Blue Origin's complaints over NASA's choice to cooperate with SpaceX for the development of its human landing technology, thus ending the company's appeal. The judgment appears to be a major blow for Blue Origin on the surface. In a growing number of sectors, the Jeff Bezos-backed company is competing with Elon Musk's SpaceX, but SpaceX's track record puts Blue Origin at a disadvantage. The decision by NASA to go with SpaceX was made back in April. The organizations are now working together to perfect the reusable Starship Human Landing System, HLS. It's expected to take astronauts to the moon in 2024 as part of the Artemis mission. And also, what will be the Blue Origin's response to SpaceX's new edition of Swarm and its 120 Space B satellites in orbit? This acquisition might alter Starlink's plans to deliver high-speed internet all across the world. 
We have yet to see how the Starlink satellites and the Space Bees, which work in a different way, will be combined. Bezos, on the other hand, is wary about tying his own project to origin. Amazon's project Cooper is following in the footsteps of Starlink. Amazon intends to use it to deliver low-cost broadband services to communities all around the world. Amazon will collaborate with United Launch Alliance on this project, employing its five projects for propulsion. The big question is why Project Cooper isn't launching its satellites with Blue Origins rockets. Maybe the certification procedure or legal issues will take longer than expected, causing them to fall behind in yet another race. Or maybe they don't trust Amazon's sibling business with the launching. SpaceX also gave us an early peek at its Starship in August. In contrast to the tidal flats in South Texas, the magnificent fully stacked launcher is about 4,000 feet. It's SpaceX's latest victory in what has recently appeared to be a one-sided contest. But after all this, it's good to remember that during the first space race, reaching the moon in 1969 led observers to declare the United States the winner, even though the Soviet Union got to space first. But just as the first moon landing wasn't the end of Soviet space exploration, SpaceX's moon landing doesn't mark the end of Blue Origin's efforts. So, that's it for this video. Do you think that Blue Origin will overtake SpaceX in the future? Write your opinion down in the comments section below. We are really curious to know what you think about all this. And, as always, thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to like this video and click on the subscribe button below. Turn on the notifications and get informed whenever we post our original content. Thanks again, and we look forward to seeing you.